Hey, what's up? It's Christy with livingfornaptime.com and uh, I just want to thank you for tuning into this Pinterest webinar video. If you try to tune in live, you probably know that we had some technical difficulties and that did not make for a great live broadcast. But don't worry, I'm going to catch you all up in this video. So thank you for tuning in and uh, let's get right into it. Okay, so let's talk about why you're here today. I'm not sure why you signed up for this webinar, but if I had to guess, it would be because you are completely confused by Pinterest. And don't worry, you're not alone. Or maybe no one seems to be pinning your stuff. Like you think you're doing all the right things, but no one is pinning your stuff. Or maybe you want to drive traffic to your blog from Pinterest or make money from the traffic you get from Pinterest. If you said yes to any of those, good news, you're in the right place. That is the exact reason why I created this webinar and exactly what we're going to learn today. So here in this 45 minute webinar is what you'll learn. You'll learn the three components of a solid Pinterest strategy, how to create irresistible pins, how to use Pinterest to drive massive traffic to your site, and lastly, how to monetize your Pinterest traffic even on a new blog. And that new blog is important because I know a lot of you may be new to blogging, and so this is going to be great for driving traffic and monetizing your site. Before we move forward, let me introduce myself in case you don't know who I am and you just happen to come across this webinar from a friend of a friend. My name is Christy and I'm the founder of livingfornaptime.com, which is a website dedicated to helping moms and savvy boss babes get their blog off the ground and build it into a dream chasing adventure. In the last 10 years, I've sold six blogs. So believe it or not, I do have a track record for success, especially when it comes to using Pinterest to drive traffic. So what you see here is a screenshot of my Pinterest account. As you can see, I have over 5 million monthly viewers. My website pins get 440,000 daily impressions. That's nuts, right? And so I know what you're thinking. Wow, she must have a lot of followers. And let me show you exactly how many followers I do have. I have 12.2 thousand followers. And while this number might be big for some of you, it's actually quite small compared to a lot of the other pinners and bloggers out there. With only 12,000 followers, I'm able to get in front of over 5 million people every month. And I'm going to show you the exact strategy that I use to get in front of those 5 million viewers with my Pinterest account. So I run several different websites. And as you can see here is a screenshot of my analytics. Each and every single website, the number one traffic driver is Pinterest. I'm telling you guys, Pinterest is the holy grail when it comes to blog content. Think about it. It's the only social network that people are going to find content. They're going there to find blog posts. They're not going there to share pictures with their friends or sing music videos with their friends. My daughter plays a lot of music, so that's where that came from. They're not going there to, you know, speak in 140 characters. They're going there to find information. They're going there to learn, which is why Pinterest is the best place for you to promote your blog posts. So here are a couple of my most popular pins. The Santa's phone number pin has been pinned over 143 thousand times. Now this is a seasonal pin and in the next screen I'll show you exactly what that means but I'm about to come into a lot of traffic and hopefully a lot of money from this single pin because it's been pinned so much. The next pin is the three ingredient crock pot apple dump cake that's been pinned over 44,000 times and this pottery barn roundup has been pinned th over 38,000 times. Now I want you to pay special attention to the roundup because I will be talking talking about that at the end of the webinar. On the next screen, you can see exactly how much money I earned in the last 30 days from Pinterest. Now for one of my websites, I work with AdThrive and they have a really cool reporting tool that tells you exactly where your money's coming from. So this is on ad earnings alone. This is not affiliate marketing or anything else I'm doing on my website to monetize. But for one of my sites, Pinterest has 
earned me over $400 in the last 30 days. Now look at Facebook. Facebook has only earned me $7. So imagine if I wasn't promoting my site on Pinterest, I would be losing out on hundreds and thousands of dollars each month and each year. So if you scroll down here, you're at the bottom of this page, you can see my most popular pages. So the Call Santa Claus blog post that I have that you saw the pin in the last screen that has been pinned over 140,000 times in the last 30 days has brought me just over 9,000 page views and has earned me $92. Now think about it. It's September. It's August, September. When this comes to October, November, December, that pin alone will drive so much traffic to my site that not only will I earn more ad earnings, but I'll earn more blog traffic and hopefully more Pinterest followers. So um, like I said, AdThry gives you really cool reporting tools. Um, so if you have a website that has over 100,000 page views a month, you can work with AdThrive to manage your ads. Okay, so now that you've seen sort of my numbers and what Pinterest is doing for me, you know, on my various sites, I want to offer up to you what I think are the three keys to Pinterest success. Now, before I actually tell you these, there's a lot more than I could tell you about Pinterest. But for the sake of tonight, and because I want to give you super actionable tips, we're just going to really focus on these three components because I think they have the biggest impact on your Pinterest account. So those three keys to Pinterest success aka the secret sauce over here, is to create attractive vertical pins, get people to repin your pins, and which equals traffic to your blog, and then monetize that Pinterest traffic. Now, you don't have to write these down because I'm going to go into more detail on each of these in the next slides. Creating attractive pins. Okay, so what exactly makes the perfect pin? Make sure that is of a vertical orientation. Use compelling photography and use a text overlay to let your potential readers know what your pin is about. Okay, so let's talk about that. If you are still using horizontal pins, it is Pinterest suicide. Just say no to pins like this, you guys. If you're still doing these pins, I want you to stop, collaborate, and listen to me, okay? These pins, they just never get traction in Pinterest because they just get lost in the feed. No one sees these tiny horizontal pins in the feed compared to the tall infographics and the other tall vertical compelling photographs. So if you've been doing pins like this, I want you to stop. But... You might be saying to me, well, Christy, ah, you know what? Vertical pins just don't look good in my blog layout. And guys, I totally get that. I also have a blog layout that looks much better with horizontal pins. But here's what I do. I create two separate images. I create an image for my blog post, that nice horizontal image. And then I create a image for Pinterest and I stick it right at the bottom of my post so that way when someone's done reading my post they can just go ahead and click it. So I'm telling you if you feel very strongly about having a horizontal image on your blog post no problem just make sure to create two and only pin the vertical image. So here are a couple examples of vertical pins. We have a really tall and skinny one. You see this um, very often with infographics or a lot of the recipe bloggers have been doing this as well where they can feature multiple photos of the same recipe. Um, we also have the DIY pin in the middle and then more of a blogging informational pin on the on the right hand here. So in case you're wondering what dimensions or what sizes you need for your pins, here are your size guidelines. Now if you guys are already using canva.com to create your pins, that's great. They have templates and these size dimensions are based off the Canva templates. So for a standard pin, you want to do an image that's 735 by 1102. And then if you want to do one of the longer pins, I'd recommend going for 800 by 2000. And like I said, I'll give you a full list of tools that you can use to edit your photos at the end of this section. But if you're using Canva, these are already built in templates that make it easy peasy wheezy for you to use vertical images. So I best not be seeing you use horizontal images after tonight, okay? So
So the next thing you need is compelling photography. Now we're going to get into some really interesting research statistics that was done by curator.com. Okay, and they have some best practices for things that you can do when choosing your photography. And the first one is to choose reds instead of blues. So when you're either taking a picture for your blog or you're looking at stock photos, reds, pinks, and oranges get repinned nearly two to one over bluish toned images. Why is that? I bet you're wondering. The reds and pinks just feel more warm and inviting to Pinterest users. You have to remember this is a very heavily female demographic and that color scheme just tends to draw them in more. So the next time you're choosing a stock photo or taking a photo for your blog, I want you to pay attention to what colors that you're using because it can have an effect in how often the pin is going to be repinned. Next up, avoid using faces in your pins. Now I know a lot of you like to take your own photographs of your family or your children and use them in your pins. And that's adorable and I can see why you'd want to do that. But pins without faces are pinned 23 times more than pins that include faces. So that is a jarring statistic. So if you do want to use pictures of your children, do side faces or the back of the head. Avoid using, you know, head on face shots because those pins are pinned a heck of a lot less. Now, of course, there's a caveat to that. If you're a beauty blogger or, a, you know, a hairstyle blogger, then you're probably going to need to use faces. But gen you know, in a general sense, if you can avoid using faces, you'll get more repins. Next, you want to choose images that have a minimal background. So images made up of less than 30% of a background are repinned the most. Repins drop off by four times for images composed of 40% or more of the background. So this image that you see with the yellow background in the girl is a perfect image for Pinterest. Not only is it warm and inviting, but it gives you plenty of open space to do your text overlay and for the eyes to really focus in on the subject. Whereas the image on the right here with the computer, it's kind of cluttered. It's kind of, you know, clunky. This may not be as compelling for someone to repin. So let's recap. We're going to do reds instead of blues. We're going to avoid faces and we're going to do images with a minimal background. So those are the best practices for compelling photography. And if you're wondering where you can get some of that photography, again, at the end of this section, I'll tell you the some of my favorite uh, stock photo sites. Okay, so the last thing you want to do with your perfect pins are the text overlay. You need to tell people exactly what they're going to get when they click through your pin. So I'm sure you spend some time, you know, writing a very compelling headline. It's the same thing when you're doing your text overlay for your pins. You want to write something that's going to make them click. Some of you you know, are already doing the text overlay, but you might get a little crazy with the fonts, okay? And I see all sorts of crazy colors and a million different fonts. Slow down, okay? My best recommendation is for you to stick with a maximum of two fonts and make them legible. Don't use any crazy colors. Use a color that's very consistent with your color scheme. You know, black, white, grays are really great neutrals. Um, and then you can add an accent color, you know, if it fits. But you want to stick with a maximum of two fonts. And I've got some best practices for pairing fonts here. And this image you see is font combinations with Canva. So if you're using Canva, then here are some font combinations that you can use uh, right in the Canva platform. But some of the best practices are you want to use one fat and skinny, a tall and short, a cursive and straight, or all caps and lower caps. So opposites really do work well together when it comes to fonts. So just remember that as you're doing the text overlay that you want to use a neutral color and then also the rule of opposites uh, for the font combinations. Okay, as I promised, I'm going to share some of my favorite Pinterest image tools with you. So for stock photo sites, I use Pexels, Pixabay, and all the free stock. Those are completely free. Um, as far as paid sites, I've also used hotchocolate.ca, Creative Market, iStock, and Shutterstock. 
Um, and as far as photo editing software, I know a lot of you probably already use Canva, but you can you can also use PicMonkey or Adobe Photoshop. Adobe Photoshop is ten dollars a month, and that's the one that I use. It just gives you a little bit more control um, over the things that you can do in the different layouts. So if you guys are thinking about you know you've kind of outgrown Canva and you want a little more flexibility, I totally recommend um, Adobe Photoshop. Okay, so now that we've created an irresistible pin, we've got to get it repinned. So how do we do that? Well, the beauty about Pinterest is that you do not need a ton of followers to have success, right? So as you saw, I only have 12 thousand followers yet I get in front of over five million people a month and how do I do that well I do that because I belong to group boards so let me explain to you how group boards work group boards work where a pinner decides to open up one of their boards to contributors right and so then you may get an invitation to contribute to that board now the the bonus is if that pinner has more followers than you. For example, I belong to several group boards that have tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands of followers. So me with my measly 12,000 followers and able to pin my blog post in group boards that have over 100,000 followers. And that is exactly how I'm getting the repins and the traffic and earning the money that I do with such a small account. So here's how it works with group boards. You first find relevant group boards, then you ask to join the group board, and then you pin your content in that group board. So let me explain a little bit further how you go about doing all of that. So you can find group boards a couple of different ways. There's a website called pingroupie.com and there's several Facebook groups um, available online that you can join that are exactly designed to source and find um, members for a group board and one of the ones that I'm in is called it's just called Pinterest group board so if you go to Facebook and put that in the search you should be able to find it these websites will help you locate boards that are accepting contributors so once you find a group board that you'd like to contribute you follow that board it's just kind of good courtesy to do that find the group board owner and you can do this because it will be the first image on that group board. When you go to a group board, it'll show you several of the pinners that pin and collaborate on that board. The first one will be the group board owner. And what you can do is go ahead and send them a message on Pinterest, or some of them will actually have their email in the, in the board description that you can email and ask to contribute to the group board. Now you want to start off by, you know, introducing yourself in the email and saying, hey, I follow your group board, ABC board, I would love to contribute. Here's a link to my profile so you can get a feel for what I have to offer. More times than not, they'll come back and say, yes, I'm still accepting contributors and they'll add you. Or you may not hear back from them. Don't take it personally. These board owners are very busy and just follow up a week or two later and say, hey, just want to make sure that you got my um, request. And then more than likely, if they haven't responded yet, they will respond and say, you know, I'm so sorry, I'm, I've been busy or whatnot. But the key here is to be persistent. So, um, and like I said, don't take it personally if, the, if you don't hear back. Okay, so now that you're in the group, so let's say you've sent out a bunch of emails and you've gotten an invita invited to several of the group boards. Now here's where the magic happens. You are going to be able to pin your pins into these group boards. But let's be honest, if you did that to all your group boards and pinned all your pins, you'd just be spending all day long on Pinterest. And my friends, life is too short to spend all day on Pinterest. So I'm going to show you how to automate some of that. So the tool that I use is called Board Booster. So it's an online service that auto pins your pins to group boards. It's about $10 a month. Um, and the nice thing is that it also loops your pins. And so I'll give you a little bit more explanation of what that means in the coming slides. Okay, so here's an example of my Board Booster account. So as you can see here, it's got six of the group boards that I belong to. And in the corner here, you, in the corner of each of these images, you can see how many times I'm pinning to each of these. So in the budget-friendly recipes, I'm pinning twice a day. In the can-do pinners, I'm pinning twice a day. In the frugal and money-saving board, I'm pinning three times a day. Now what this is doing is it's taking 
pins that I've designated. And I'm saying, you know, here are the pins from my blog. And then Board Booster is automatically pinning these pins inside the group boards every single day. So as you can see, I pin, you know, uh, two in one board and three in another. And the reason I do that is because some group boards have different rules about how often you can pin in them. And then others are smaller group boards. So I don't want to overwhelm a group board with all of my pins throughout the day. So I'm very, you know, mindful of how much I'm pinning. But essentially, Board Booster takes my pins and pins them into these groups every single day, every single week, month, throughout the year. And for me personally, I pin 35 pins to 18 boards per day on autopilot. The other nice thing that Board Booster does is that it loops my older pins to my boards. So what you see here are the are my boards. These are not group boards. These are boards that I have on my account that are mine. And what Board Booster does is it takes the oldest pin and repins it. It takes the oldest pin and repins it every single day, sometimes twice a day, sometimes once a day, depending on the board. And what this does is it shows the older content, hopefully, to my new followers. Because think about it, your Pinterest account is always growing, and people who weren't following you a week ago surely didn't see what you pinned a month ago, so you can go ahead and repin it. So Board Booster allows you to loop those older pins and get more traction on those pins. So as you can see, these are the strategies that I use with the group boards to get my Pinterest traffic. For one of my websites, I'm getting between one to 2,000 page views a day just from Pinterest because I'm able to pin to these group boards that have a much larger audience. So if you learn nothing more tonight, actually that's not true, I want you to learn two things tonight. One, you need to do the vertical pins, but two, group boards are really where it's at, especially if you're a new blogger. It is the best way to get in front of a larger audience. Think about this, Pinterest is the only social network that allows you know someone with a small amount of followers to you know have access to a larger group. So really, really work on getting invites to those group boards. Okay. The good stuff. Now we're going to get into the good stuff. And I say the good stuff because I'm all about the money. It's all about the money, money, money. I just feel like you should get paid to blog. And so Pinterest can help you do that. And for this section, I'm actually going to use one of my own personal references that I've been very impressed with and uh, very happy about. So let's talk about roundups. So roundups plus Pinterest equal a freaking gold mine, okay? So if for those of you who don't know, a roundup is when you create a blog post about a certain topic and recommend products. So you use affiliate marketing links on those products. So when someone makes a purchase from that roundup, you earn a commission. Now I'm sure you've seen some of these on Pinterest like a holiday gift guide, Mother's Day gifts, camping gear you absolutely need. You get the picture. So these are absolute money makers if you combine them with Pinterest. And so let me give you a personal example. Three months ago, I started a brand new website called Melasma Diaries. So Melasma is it's kind of a passion project. It's a Melasma is a hyperpigmentation of the skin that many post-pregnant women suffer from. I have it and it has affected my life in many different ways. So I decided to start a blog to help other women who have this, right? So one of the things that women with melasma struggle with is covering the dark splotches on their face. So I created a roundup of best foundations for covering melasma. Now let me remind you, this is a brand new site. I had less than 300 followers. I belonged to zero group boards and I pin very infrequently on this account. Now, because people are going to Pinterest to search for this kind of information, they're finding my roundup and as a result, buying products that I recommend in this roundup. So in the next slide, I'm going to show you how much money I've earned in the last two and a half months from this single roundup. But let me just explain how it works, right? So you create a roundup that solves a pain point. Think about your audience and think about things that they're struggling with. Then create a roundup full of solutions for that pain point. Monetize it using affiliate links and then post it to your blog. You're gonna do a blog post about it and post it to your blog with the affiliate links and then pin it on Pinterest. And then let 
Pinterest do the rest of the work. So in the last two and a half months, I've earned over $600 from that roundup. You guys, this is on a brand new blog. My Pinterest account has less than 300 followers and I've already earned over $600 in the last two and a half months from this loan. Now think about it. What if I have 10, 15, 20 different roundups that are all doing the same thing? Now you can see how these can be absolute money makers for your blog, even if it is brand new. So I want you to really start thinking about doing roundups for your blog posts. You might be wondering how you can monetize these uh, roundups. And so there are a couple different affiliate companies that I would recommend. If you're brand new, I would definitely start off with Viglink, which essentially turns all of the links on your blog into a monetizing opportunity. Skimlinks does the same thing. There's also Reward Style and Shop Style, and those are really great for home decor, fashion, beauty. Or you, if you want to promote individual products, you can do Amazon and share a sale. Now there are also dozens of different companies that you can use, but these are just some of my favorites and they're a really great place for you to get started with affiliate marketing. So let's talk about what you learned today. You learned attractive pins plus group boards plus monetization is the keys to your success in Pinterest. You also learned how to create Pinterest perfect pins. You learned how to use group boards to get repins and traffic to your blog. And lastly, you learned how to monetize and use roundups to monetize Pinterest. So, so this is normally where I would do the Q&A, but because this is a video and we're not doing it live, I'm going to set up a follow-up time where you can go ahead and ask me your questions. If this was helpful to you at all, please don't keep it a secret. Tell everyone that you know about Living for Nap Time. And thank you again for tuning in.